All right, good morning, everyone. It is, uh, it's great to see all of you outside and uh, socially distant, for the record. Uh, and uh, it's been too long since we've been in each other's presence. And hopefully we'll be together soon. Confucius is credited as saying, may you live in interesting times. And so here we are in interesting times. Interesting times that create perils, that create challenges, that seem to change almost daily. It's my belief that times like these call for steadfast and courageous leadership. And that's why, based on that belief, I could tell you that it is my honor and my privilege to administer the oath of office to the new chairman of the Tra National Transportation Safety Board, Jennifer Hammondy. Thank you. If you'll raise your right hand. Thank you. I, Jennifer Hammondy. I, Jennifer Hammondy. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will take, that I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. The duties of, of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Right. Here, Mike, I'll take that first. I'll take this off. Oh. Well, uh, thank you, Judge Montano, and um, thank you all for being here. Um, I, I do want to thank, first and foremost, my family. I just just to explain, every year uh, my family takes a vacation together. It's time where my entire side gets together, and for the last three years, I've been. Uh, uh, sworn in at the same time everyone is at that uh, event and usually they all have to come back. This time it was such a difficult year that I really felt like it was good time for them to be with family and I could also be with my other family. So uh, so they're, they're uh, watching uh, on phone right now so um, I, I just will take a second and say that becoming a member of the NTSB or becoming chair uh, can be very challenging and very difficult. It's a difficult process, just like your jobs are very difficult every day. And it takes and can take a lot of support, whether that's from friends or family or significant others. And I just have to say that I have been <clears throat> I've been very blessed to have the best spouse ever and <clears throat> I just want to tell you how much I love you and thank you for putting up with me <laughs> when I work late nights and uh, text on weekends uh, and um, have just a crazy schedule and I just appreciate all your support. Uh, you have no idea how much that means to me and I have to also say uh, that my daughter Lexi um, has also been a real support for me. She's very inspiring. Um, She's a perfectionist, and I have no idea where she got that. Um, <laughs> she's very dedicated. 
she recently did a video uh, with me for uh, uh, a, a women's transportation seminar where she interviewed me about my job at the NTSB and that really meant a lot for me. And I also know that my parents are watching and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you. So um, with that, I want to thank Member Graham, Mike Graham, who is uh, a member of the NTSB and also a really good friend. Thank you for your friendship and for being a fantastic member of the board. And um, I also want to thank uh, Vice Chairman Bruce Landsberg, who did a phenomenal job uh, holding down the fort from the time that uh, Chairman Sumwalt left uh, till now. Thank you for uh, keeping everything running and doing a great job. And then I also want to thank Member Chapman, uh, who is a fantastic colleague and a former colleague of mine uh, from Capitol Hill. And I really just truly am blessed with some tremendous colleagues, both on the board and colleagues within the agency. I try very hard to get away from the word staff because we are all equal and we all work very hard uh, towards safety and I just appreciate everything you do on a daily basis. I'm, you know, I hope you know that. You probably hear it a lot, but I will say, you know, I have a long background with the NTSB. I looked through just some things from my previous um, employments, and I was I, I looked back to 1997, 1998, and found things that I did with the NTSB on safety for commercial motor vehicles. And you know, through the years, that relationship grew. In 2004, I became staff director of a subcommittee on Capitol Hill, and part of my responsibilities was pipeline safety also rail and hazmat, but I knew rail and hazmat. I did not know anything about pipelines. So I called the NTSB and I talked to Bob Chipkovich, who ran the uh, 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 department at the time, the Office of Railroads, Pipelines and Hazardous Materials Investigations. And he taught me everything I knew about pipeline safety. I came over to the NTSB. We went through a uh, accident report about a uh, pipeline rupture in Virginia in South Riding and he just spent a lot of time with me. There was a, a restaurant uh, it, on the first floor of the L'Enfant Plaza Hotel which used to be here and I would come over and meet him at the restaurant and he'd talk all about pipelines teaching me everything there was and I just and he also was responsible for me requesting from the Department of Transportation every single report that they issued since 1968 to get up to speed on pipeline safety, so they weren't too happy. But what's interesting about that is part of my uh, uh, work with the NTSB uh, was uh, also reading a SCADA report that uh, Rob Malloy uh, who is our Director of Office of Highway Safety, um, wrote or worked on. And when I was nominated and came to the agency for a briefing, but before I was confirmed, I ran into Rob in the hall and I said, oh, I loved that report. It was so good. I used it for so many years. And he looked at me and said, I'm sorry, who are you? <laughs> it, was, it was great. Uh, but over the years, I worked a lot with the NTSB to get recommendations implemented through legislation because that was one way I felt that I could help because families would come see us on the Hill and talk about their, their loved ones that were lost in accidents or crashes and ask for our help. So I was a real advocate for the safety mission of the NTSB. And so coming here in 2018 was a real dream of mine. But I can tell you that I never would have imagined this. You know, <clears throat> we, we accomplished a lot together when I was on the Hill. We've accomplished a lot together since I've been here. But you accomplished so much more on your own and together as a team. And I have to tell you, 
I have tremendous respect, like I said, for everything you do on a daily basis. We're at a time in transportation where we have, where there's tremendous growth, where there is a lot of opportunity. We have commercial space, we have drones, we have automated vehicles, we talk about autonomous vehicles, although there are no fully automated vehicles on the market, just partially. <laughs> so, uh, but there are also, with, with tr opportunity and growth, comes tremendous challenges. And our safety mission is so critical to meeting those challenges. Our mission is to investigate all accidents, uh, significant accidents and other modes of transportation and every single accident in uh, uh, aviation in the United States. And that alone, I think, will get us to uh, through this time of change and to meet needs in the future and I think a renewed focus on our mission, a dedication to our, our safety mission will get us through and meet those needs. Um, over the next couple of days, I, uh, I will finalize um, some work on my priorities. I want to wait and meet with staff on those, uh, which uh, my colleagues on those uh, on Thursday at two o'clock. And um, I, I don't want to talk about those until I have those discussions. I think it's really important to discuss that uh, with my colleagues at the agency first. Um, before that, I'll be meeting with our uh, Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Committee. Um, uh, Farah Guest, who's the director of uh, EEODI for us, and then also our union next week. So those are exciting meetings. Um, but again, uh, I, I'm just really excited to be here and to be in this position. I told, I told the judge and I've told others that I have two goals, and actually a, a senator asked me about this. They, he asked, what is my legacy? And I, I didn't know what to say because I've never thought about it that way, and I, I don't, I still don't, because it's not about me. It really isn't. I think if I could save one life, together, if we could save one life, we've succeeded. But more importantly, if I could come to the agency and leave the agency a better place, then I've succeeded. So I'm here to help you get your resources that you need and help you meet the challenges of our future. So thank you very much for this opportunity and for the willingness uh, to give me a chance to serve each of you. I really uh, just want to spend my time supporting each of you. Thank you very much. And to my friends that are watching, go Tigers.